Hi, welcome. Happy Monday. Hope you're having a great bank holiday. Fingers crossed the weather's playing ball and uh, you're managing to get out and enjoy some sunshine and have some meals out and see friends. It's really nice now, isn't it, to get out and about. Um, we are all working away, though, here in the Flavours office. And of course, it's Monday, so we are going to be live with Livia in her kitchen in, uh, in Italy. And she's got some uh, delicious recipes for us today. We're going to be doing some, some strawberry liqueur and... Um, so an alternative to limoncello, so it's a great favourite. And let's just see what if Livia's there. Yay, oh, hello. Hi. Buon lunedì. Hi. Very well, I'm fine. Today, finally, it doesn't rain. It's been raining almost every day last week, which is good because we need water. Yeah. But it's a little bit boring. But it's always quite warm. And I've heard there is a little bit cold, chilly. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I have got short okay. sleeves on, but I think I'm just being optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> but that's good. The spring is coming, and that's why we finally get the chance to to do recipes with spring ingredients, actually. Exactly, so, exactly. Yeah. You sent me through the recipe at the weekend, and I was like, strawberry liqueur. Everybody we know are all, I guess, love limoncello. So you're trying to sort of, you know, get some competitive edge here on, on limoncello with your strawberry liqueur. Uh, yes, it's big competition actually. And uh, well, in Italy, you can do a lot of different liqueurs up to the region where you live and up to the season. Where, so that's why you can find the pure alcohol that I got here yeah. <laughs> in uh, at the supermarket. But we will talk about this. Comunque, yeah. Anyway, is it already uh, uh, it's too early maybe for your strawberries in UK, for your local no, strawberries? No, actually, funny enough, we had strawberries actually at the weekend. So we had strawberries and meringues. Yeah. The they were Scottish strawberries, actually. They were really tasty. They were really yummy, actually. So no, strawberries are coming out, actually. And um, I thought it was quite interesting. You're going to be doing some, um, some alcohol, Livia, and you're also going to be doing a fruit salad. So that's kind of combination of, you know. <laughs> you know there is always... Food. There is always a combination. Actually, I got also <laughs> a sparkling wine, okay, aspetta, non so, ribolla gialla, which is another good, uh, famous uh, uh, sparkling white, uh, similar yeah. to Prosecco from Italy. Um, and this is good to use in the, in the fruit salad. So a fruit salad doesn't mean it's very healthy. Uh, you know, there's a difference between a fruit salad served as a dessert and a fruit salad like the one that Lorne you used to make. Uh, I remember at breakfast in the morning when I was coming to Edinburgh and yeah. staying with you. Uh, so that's more like a mixed fruit that you would eat with yogurt and it's not really a fruit salad. What we consider a fruit salad. A fruit salad is a substitute of a dessert so it needs to be quite sweet, a little bit sweet and also it can have a kick of alcohol that you can add to it that will help the fruit to preserve longer and also will give a little bit of flavor and it will help you to digest at the end of the meal. So that's why I think it's, um, you know, it's, com it's a different concept than a fruit salad that you have at breakfast. So that's right. a fruit salad you should have in the evening, maybe. Right. <laughs> or after a meal, after a, quite mm -hmm. a big meal. Mm -hmm. So today uh, mm -hmm. we are going to make uh, the liqueur because uh, this is part of Ita the Italian culture, so preparing your own liqueur up to what you have in your region, which is in season, it's very typical. We have seen a lot of pictures, of, I think, of Antonio making his own, or also maybe Pina, or making, uh, or Carla for sure, and Massimiliano also, making their own uh, liqueur, especially in the south, because that's mm -hmm. where they produce most of the, you know, best ingredients that you could use for uh, an homemade liqueur. So. A kind of liqueur which is very typical from, for example, uh, Sicily, or Puglia come from, is the one made with uh, um, wild fennel. So these mm -hmm. are uh, early shoots, you know, so let's say young, very young shoot of uh, wild fennel, also with a small bulb that comes, would have to come here at this uh, edge, uh, this side. Uh, kept in pure alcohol would make a special green uh, digestive. Uh, and it will make it really good at the end of your meal to have a little glass, a small glass of this liqueur. So it's not just about limoncello, which is typical from Amalfi. And I remember that when we go with uh, flavors with, uh, on our holidays in Amalfi, we always visit a limoncello producer and he makes us taste 
all the different kind of liqueurs that they produce. And it's not just about limoncello, but limoncello is obviously the most popular one that everyone knows that travels the world and is actually with a very strong yellow color that helps the selling, actually. Mm. And uh, that's the most famous one, maybe. Yeah. But we got really many kinds. Yeah, they do a really nice one in Puglia as well. It's mandarincino. They make it with little oranges. It's really nice. I think people are either, I've noticed, either love limoncello because of the sweetness or like they like with like grappa, which is a much, much stronger flavour. They're always the two most popular aperitifs. We were, we were grappa, is, yeah. Grappa, grappa is considered to be like the men drink. So, <laughs> But we got some of our guests there women that like grappa i remember so sometimes i have to go buy it especially for them when they say well limoncello is too sweet but yeah. the sweetness of a liqueur depends on how you dilute it so obviously if you start from mm -hmm. <laughs> pure alcohol like this one which is 96 uh, proof percentage mm -hmm. proof so it's really alcoholic we were discussing about this Lorna yesterday uh, during the lesson because i was showing uh, you know I, I actually yesterday had a lesson uh, there were some guests that were from uh, Scotland, so they were talking about how oh, can you find the pure alcohol in Italy in a supermarket? That's crazy. That's very strange. Not crazy, but that's very strange. How can we we do it? <laughs> and how can we get it here easily? So James have found uh, online a 70 percentage proof uh, al alcohol, and uh, I think that could be a, a good way to do it. Anyway, don't worry if you don't have pure alcohol. There are two ways to get it. One, one is to get a prescription in a pharmacy <laughs> that you need. It's a bit complicated, Livia. I think otherwise you just need to do vodka or something. Sort of yeah. But that's yeah. really, some guests told me that if you know a pharmacist, <laughs> you have to have someone friend. Yeah, or if yeah, you just get yeah, the prescription, yeah. like, I don't know, let's say I have to get a cure with pure alcohol for my, I don't know, womb or something like that, then you can get it, or I have to make my own liqueur. Yeah. That could be a way to get it. Otherwise, uh, use vodka. Exactly. Obviously, my idea is that vodka has a flavor, because the plain vodka is sold as a liqueur. We would yeah. never drink this. And that was the yeah. other um, uh, question that someone uh, have asked yesterday. So I think in Italy, we are allowed to um, drink more easier than uh, in UK, and that's don't uh, make people feel like they have to drink pure alcohol you know like also because pure alcohol is quite expensive so you know like you can buy many okay. other things great so that's it's why really this yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah it's it costs really 13 good. euros that's what they were asking yesterday yeah, yeah. Okay. perfect okay so let's let's park the alcohol we've got that living we all understand <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. so vodka vodka okay. will be fine the more important part are the ingredients in each region, there are different uh, vegetables from different regions as I, or fruit, as I was saying. In my region, we famous for nocino, and that's have, so walnuts, and that one has to be done on the 21st of June. Here, we're going to do a strawberry liqueur. I've already prepared some, but I'm going to show you how to do it. First of all, you should wash the strawberries. And uh, to wash the strawberries, the strawberries, which is very important, you should... Uh, for sure, take uh, the uh, lid off, okay, and, and then, then keep them so uh, okay. yes yeah, in water with, with some uh, bicarbonato. Che non so come si dice, Lorna. How do you say bicarbonato? Bicar bicarbonate. Yeah. I don't know. How to pronounce it. Bicarbonate. Yeah, bicarbonato di sodio. Okay, yeah. and that mm -hmm. will help them to be completely mm, clean. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, for at least 15 minutes. So if you put an amount of bicarbonato, like a little spoon like this, okay, and soak them in water for at least 15 minutes, that will help them to get rid of any dark, uh, you know, bits or bad bits that we don't want to get. So then drain them and then they are ready to be used. In this case, I have some already cleaned here to use. Okay. And I'm going to show you how to cut them, how small we should cut them to keep them with uh, um, pure alcohol. Um, that's a really good tip, Livia, with the bicarbonate. Could you just do that normally if you're just doing a fruit salad? You would wash the strawberries in the bicarbonate or soda? You should wash every vegetable and every fruit you use with carbonate. It would uh, help to get rid of every uh, chemical product that have been used uh, for the production of the fruit or the vegetable you're washing. 
So it's very useful and uh, it helps uh, to get rid of problems, let's say. I think we're losing your I think we're losing your um your volume a little, a little bit. Is that you back? Can you hear me? No, not well. I can hear you a little bit faintly. Keep chopping. Can you hear me, Lorna? Sorry. Yeah, I can hear you. I think there's a problem with the sound. Sorry about that. Uh, not sure you can hear me. Mm, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Modern technology. Can you hear me now? Uh, you know, you're quite faint, Livia. I think it's not clicked into the, the telephone or the, the speaker. What about uh, if I leave from here and you are lying there? Hmm. Is that you there? Oops, is it I'm really sorry, can you hear me now? Yeah, that should come back. You're back to life. It was a problem yeah. with my phone. Can yeah. you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah good, Lily, I'm back to life. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so, so the sort of basic... I know. Yeah. Okay. Now, now we'll place them in, in a box, box, in a jar, where well, I can <laughs> seal uh, them well <laughs> with pure right. alcohol. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add about, uh, um, I'm doing a smaller amount, but the ingredients that you got are for 500 milliliters of alcohol, which is half a liter, mm -hmm. 700 mils of water, and 400 grams of sugar to make the syrup, and 500 grams of strawberries. So for half a liter of alcohol is 500 grams of uh, uh, strawberries for okay. half a liter of alcohol. This is a little bit less, is 280, 200 mils of uh, alcohol for 200 grams of strawberries. So I'm going to leave them here for about uh, 10 days, let's say, for them to extract the best, the most flavor and color they can from the fruit. Mm -hmm. okay. And this is the result after a few days. It, this is the result after just a few days. I could leave it longer, but even just after a few days, it's, it's already a good result. Obviously, the flavor, the smell of the alcohol is still very strong. Yeah. And as you can see, it's pretty mm, red color already. Okay. So and what we have to do now... Yeah, yeah sorry. There's, there's no sugar in there at all. It's just, just pure, it's just pure strawberries and nothing else. No sugar and no yeah. anything. This is just 200 mils of alcohol and 200 grams of strawberries. They will have to stay here. So the alcohol will extract the flavor and the color of the strawberries and uh, keep it, you know, and it will be, will all go in the pure alcohol. And it will become like this. So as you can see here, after a few days, the strawberry have lost their color completely. And uh, the liquid that we have obtained is a, a dark uh, red color liquid that will have to be mixed to a syrup that okay. we will make now. So to make the syrup, and mm -hmm. we go in there, yeah, um, you just need to warm. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, Livia, um, Kieran's manning Facebook, so we've got the recipe. Kieran will pop the link on for the, for the recipe if anyone wants to start um, making it at home for the weekend. <laughs> yes, sure. Um, I think you should use uh, the same amount uh, with vodka. Vodka maybe is a little bit less alcoholic than 96% proof, so you can just uh, use uh, more amount of alcohol uh, than syrup to make it more alcoholic if you like. So this is the water that I need to use if I want to do a 30% proof um, uh, 30% proof. Uh, yeah. uh, could you just move that? With, yeah, we can only really half see the saucepan. Could you move the camera just a little bit to our right? Sure, yes. Sir. These no, are all good. the fruits that we're going to use for for afterwards uh, for the healthy fruit salad yeah. to combat the alcohol. The fruit salad, yeah, yeah, okay. That's good. Thanks, Livia. I am adding the sugar, which, in case you are doing uh, um, up to 500. Uh, 
grams of strawberries and 500 ml of pure alcohol it should be 400 grams of sugar so we are melting the sugar in water to obtain a syrup mm -hmm. okay, so simply when the water boils add the sugar and that will melt it faster then you will have to cool down you see now it's already melted so it's very simple very easy it seems to be quite a lot of sugar for the amount of water because we're talking about 400 grams of sugar for uh, just uh, a little amount of water. But you have to think that these liquor have to be a digestive and uh, pure alcohol is very strong and it needs to be made sweet using quite a lot of sugar. So you need uh, obviously now to cool it down because if you add... Uh, and not syrup to pure alcohol, the alcohol will evaporate. So I got here the some that I previously made. Okay. And so this is uh, an, my syrup made previously, which is already cooled down. And I'm going to add to this the pure alcohol that has been staying in contact with the strawberries for at least a week. Mm -hmm. As you can see, he has, he has completely taken away the color of the strawberries that right now are pink. Okay. I can use these, uh, for example, if I make my fruit salad, like I will show you in a little while, there will be quite alcoholic fruit salad, but uh, still uh, it will give a kick, let's say, to the fruit salad. Also, otherwise, I could use these strawberries. Uh, Actually, even with the yogurt alone, it would be like an alcoholic breakfast. <laughs> it's exactly. not, you know, it's not really alcoholic. It's just a, a kick because you're not eating a lot of them. You just add a few. So this is the, the liqueur ready. Syrup plus pure alcohol that has been staying in contact with the, the fruit and is already very colored. And I'm going to bottle it now so I can show you. Obviously, then you would get a, a nice bottle. Mm -hmm. You have it. Okay. And we're getting quite a lot of rebound, Livia, with, this, with the volume. With ah. the screen. I don't know, I can hear you sort of twice. I turn down the volume. So I will turn down the volume. Sorry, I don't know why today we have technical problems with my phone. <laughs> Try to turn it down. Is it slightly better or not? Otherwise, we can I just get out a little bit for a few minutes or a second, and then you tell, allow me back in. Oh, it's lovely. It's, it's great colour. It's amazing. Yeah. And oh, is it very sweet taste? That's, if you want, I can try it. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> <Good> <laughs> yeah, try it for us. That's really kind of you. Okay. Is it okay now? Can you hear the yeah. rebound? Oh, yeah. No, it's fine now. It's perfect. It's fine. Sorry, it was my computer. You know, you know I'm not very technical. So you could do a nice spot. I've done one third of the recipe that you got in the blog. So mm -hmm. this is half a liter, let's say. Instead, you have the recipe for a liter and a half. Okay. So mm -hmm. depending on how much you dilute the pure alcohol, you will have a different proof of the liqueur. It doesn't have to be a very alcoholic uh, liqueur. So it doesn't have to be high proof because it's used to digest. So just a little bit to digest at the end of the meal. That's why in Italy, every family makes his own liqueur to digest at the end of the meal. So mm. That's why they sell pure alcohol in a supermarket. Okay. Yeah. And could you, with that, with that, the, yeah, with that kind of syrup, could you maybe make it into, you know, could you add a nice soda water and make it like a sparkling drink? Or could you hmm. use it for... Never, I never thought about that. Never, I never tried it. I wonder if <laughs> in sparkling water there is CO2. So I wonder if it yeah. makes it very maybe. different. Water, maybe. Just you should try. Yeah. Usually a syrup makes it sweet and that's why sometimes people don't like for example limoncello yeah because it makes it very oh porca miseria now it seems like everyone are you okay now can you hear me yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry that's it yeah come back technical hmm. I'm really sorry. It's. I'm really sorry. Can you hear me now? 
it's fine. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Seems like today is very. It's like I cannot use my phone without the. Vabbè, taking it off the connection. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Comunque, so this uh, is a. Um, yeah, I think you could use also maybe sparkling water. I was thinking. Mm -hmm. But um, the idea is that making a syrup that make it quite sweet is always what we, and for every liqueur is done. You can decide if you want it sweeter or less sweet if you mm -hmm. use more or less sugar, obviously. So you yeah. can make a, a sweeter syrup, but also less sweet. And the sugar is also used to preserve the liqueur. Obviously, the alcohol will preserve mm -hmm. the liqueur, but also the yeah. sugar. Yeah. It's a really interesting recipe, Livia. When was the first time you, you found that recipe or who gave you the recipe? It's an unusual one. Uh, uh, actually, going to Amalfi or going to Puglia mm. or Sicily and learning how to make limoncello, that's why. Uh, my father has always been making uh, um, walnut liqueur, which is called nocino, yeah. because that's yeah. what we got here. But uh, so we usually do it, yes, I was saying, you know, 24th of June, which is uh, uh, San Giovanni. Okay, so that's the day when you make liqueur, the liqueur and you collect uh, the um, walnuts when they're still green. You make a cut and you keep them in, a, in a, a pure alcohol and then it becomes completely uh, brown and very dark. Mm -hmm. It may be also black. So that's a digestive. Obviously, it is more of a bitter flavor. These are digestive too, but they are sweeter, so that's why they say they are more uh, for female than men. <laughs> and you, yeah, and could you use any other kind of fruits then, like pear or any other fruits? Yes, sure. As I was saying, you can use mandarin, you can use bergamot, which would be mm -hmm. really great. I've, uh, in Ischia, I remember I've tasted a three citrus fruit liqueur that was special with bergamot. It makes it really nice. Mm -hmm. So, um, another way, you know, is whatever you think can release a nice flavor to it. I think mm -hmm. you do something with, uh, you make a slow gin yeah, with, uh, right. Right, I've yeah. been told by, but we don't have slow, so we don't have that kind of fruit, so I don't know, I'm not sure what to use instead. Well, I don't think every fruit can be really perfect mm -hmm. for it, but there's people that do it with melon or mandarin, especially when they are green, they are really nice. And another thing that uh, I, I think we already talked about is a traditional limoncello is not yellow, because mm -hmm. originally limoncello used to be made with the pruning of the lemon trees. They prune the lemon trees quite right. often, yeah. and the lemons are green by then. And instead of throwing them away, they used to use them with pure alcohol to make uh, limoncello instead of throwing them. So that's mm -hmm. why the original limoncello is green, but now it sells better mm -hmm. if it's very yellow. So that's why sometimes they use additives or uh, you know things to change the color mm -hmm. to color to give it a, a bright uh, yellow color mm -hmm. to sell it better. Actually, I prefer green because now I know that when it's green, it's really made with the, the right Which lemon set. It's authentic. Come on. Yeah, and so what we're making now then, Levy, is going to yeah. just do a quick So this salad. is a, another very simple, so some, just some ideas for when you make a fruit salad. So we we'll yeah. take all the fruit here. Okay. Well, so when you make a fruit salad, you should always mm, pay attention not to make certain mistakes. Okay, so uh, the mistakes you have to avoid uh, is the fact that you don't have to use the fruit when it's not ripened enough, and mm -hmm. also you don't have to use over-ripened fruit. So remember, we're not talking about the fruit you eat at breakfast, but fruit salad is uh, a dessert. So it's instead uh, in place of a dessert. So uh, I'm talking about this kind of idea, which is a mixture of different, uh, different fruit, which are in season, so they are uh, fresh with a, a good uh, flavor. Mm -hmm. So not, not uh, all of the fruit that I'm going to use now are in season, as you can see. Because uh, melon is starting to be in season now, actually. So I found it today. I went uh, to my fruit vegetable shop and uh, they had some. It doesn't come from Emilia Romagna, but it comes from the south of Italy. Okay. These are not Italian, for sure. You mm -hmm. can find them all year round. I know you have really good quality in UK. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, when they are in season, they are really great. Uh, these come from Spain, actually. Strawberries are local. Kiwis, my region is a big produ pro producer of kiwis, so we mm -hmm. always have them. And then pears, which are still in season, and oranges, they are about to get out of season. So 
the way to cut um, fruit salad is to make it not too small, okay, and not too big. They have to be all a similar size. So I want to make a very small fruit salad. With pieces don't have to be too small because otherwise they melt, you lose them. It's quite so they have to be all similar sizes. So you have to respect the size of the one you cannot cut smaller. So I won't cut this strawberry in four pieces because it would end up to be too small. So I just cut enough. Okay, just yeah. to fit in with the sizes of everything I'm slicing in here. So when it's too small, it more it looks more like a I don't know, a mesh of fruit, you know, like it. And when it's too big, it's difficult to eat it. Another rule you have to respect is that you don't have to use the seeds. You have to peel the fruit, never leave it with the skin on, because that's just a way to show that you are in a rush. No, <laughs> you know, most of the fruit, yeah, it's not, because there is any, there's no reason to leave it with the skin on. Okay, so I'm trying yeah. to do the same sizes. And also get rid of all the seeds. Okay, so no skin and no seeds because the seeds are not nice when you eat them. Okay, mm -hmm. so peel it and wash it well before using it. As again, uh, use a uh, bicarbonate when you have to uh, yeah. when you wash it. Make sure it's very clean. So this is my melon. I'm not going to make very very small cubes. I'm trying to yeah. keep it like. Yeah, did you say, Livia, that you were going to taste the um, strawberry liqueur for us? Have you tasted it yet? No, I'm going to taste, <laughs> I'm going to taste it in front of you and I will show you I will survive. <laughs> okay, uh, so yeah. some, yeah, I've peeled the orange and um, I've peeled the orange and, uh, and uh, da noi si dice l'ho pelata a vivo, so I've left just uh, the, the um, flesh out, I took mm -hmm. off all the white bits. Okay, so that was actually the bitter part. Then I'm adding some uh, mirtilli. Also, another very important uh, rule is to give it a variation in colors. I know I told you to use the fruit just when it's in season, so it doesn't mean that all of this fruit is in season. We produce a lot of uh, kiwis, but right now, obviously, it's not produced. It's produced in winter, but the kiwi that I bought is actually not too hard and not too soft. So I don't like it when it's a mesh, but it needs to have the same consistency. And all of the fruits that you're using should have a similar consistency. The color that you give to your fruit salad, it is very important. It has to be a mixture of color. You cannot do, si dice monochromatico, so it cannot be just one color fruit salad because it will be slightly boring. Every time you add strawberries, this, you should also add some mint. I'm adding some of my strawberries that have been staying in pure alcohol <laughs> to give it a bit of a That's kick, it. let's yeah. say. I was, just, yeah. I was just thinking, Livy, actually, it's always nice because you always kind of switch between Italian and English. And um, anybody who's wanting to sort of learn a little bit more Italian or practice their Italian, you've got your um, aperitivo uh, chat on Thursday night, this Thursday. Ah, vero, vero. Places. If anyone wants vero, to vero. That. That's a lot of fun. Usually we have a lot of fun because I try to be also an Italian teacher, yeah. <laughs> not just while I'm cooking. So, but actually it comes better because it's much easier to do this in Italian. Okay, so I've, I've just mixed some mint, Lorna, just some mint. Yeah, so, yeah the, the Italian lessons are really, to the Italian, the Italian aperitivo are fun because everyone's very relaxed and with a glass of wine even more. And uh, we, I don't know, like, let's say we, we well, I cook in Italian, I talk in Italian, but since I can explain it also in English, I make sure that everyone understands. Oh, and we discuss uh, things like, for example, how do you say deep fried? Do you, what's the substitute in Italian or shallow fry or soffriggere? What's the mm -hmm. meaning of battuto um, and soffritto, you know, things and what, what they come up. But simple things that everyone can understand. So not, you know, and I say it in English. Yeah, yeah. So if anyone's um, learning Italian and they're a bit shy about speaking Italian, you don't force them to speak Italian on their Perry TV class, do you? Yeah, well, yeah. I don't. I'm not. Uh, I hope it's it's, uh, it's fun. I think it's fun for everyone. Actually, is a, a lesson that we decided. I think it happened to be like an a, an Italian cooking lesson at the end because some of them want to speak Italian and you know some of them know more and some less. So if you do an Italian lesson, maybe. You're more worried that you have to know it. But with a cooking class in Italian, we find a way to understand each other, yeah. even if no, you know, don't know much. 
matter. Yeah, I think we'll ask him, um, Kieran's on, yeah, Kieran's manning Facebook, so he'll pop a link if anybody's not got any plans for a Thursday evening and they want to, to cook yeah. and chat Italian with you, Kieran will pop a link on and uh, you can book and you can join. And I think you've got one other aperitivo on Friday. Yeah. And you, you're off on holiday, Olivia. I know, yeah, all it is, kind of. I think that's why my phone was very busy, because I'm organizing Liguria with Pasta Grannis, so I'm sorry. So I got Mayor, Town Hall, uh, Proloco, everyone calling, because I'm finding the oldest granny I can on uh, the Cinque Terre. So, and um, I don't know why they call all today at this time, but sorry. But, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, we're going to be filming there with Pasta Grannis, and I'm going to be at Cinque Terre. And actually, I've never been, so I have to be super excited because they all say it's beautiful. I think it's as beautiful as uh, Amalfi, Lorna. So I yeah. think, again, you will have to find a new venue for yeah. flavors at Le Cinque Terre. And then uh, it's, it's, it's yeah. similar to Amalfi. Similar. Yeah. And so oh. next week, will you do as a favor then? Will you, because you're on, in, you're on uh, Flavors Instagram, so you're going to be posting pictures next week just to make it, us all jealous. And, um, pictures, yeah. yeah. I'm going to be live. Sometimes, yeah, I don't know, if I see something beautiful that I cannot, uh, you know, that I would like to share, I will do it. Sure. I will, I will sure. just go live and show you the view, even just the view, or a very nice granny, or we're going to film uh, also a lot yeah. of things with fish, and we're going to fish uh, to film a fisherman, so that's what that I would like great. to share with everyone. And also, who do I know better than Flavors Guest? A lot of food, nobody. Mm -hmm. So that's why... Mm -hmm. <laughs> So that's why I want to share it, really, because it, that's why I share it all the time since many years. So every time I do yeah. something exciting, uh, I share it with uh, our no, guests. That love great, food. Olivia. No, please do. So, yeah, so next week, um, keep an eye on our Instagram, because Olivia is in charge of our Instagram next week. So yeah. we can be And I got closer. just one other thing about the fruit mm -hmm. salad, okay? So Because I want to open my bottle of Ribolla Gialla, you were trying not to make me open, but we're going to open it. So first, uh, we uh, check. A fruit salad is not really a, just a fruit salad, but is a sweet, like we were saying. So sugar will make it uh, uh, yeah, last longer, don't get dark. But also another important ingredient would be either lemon juice or orange juice, otherwise alcohol, which the acidity of alcohol, lemon or orange will make it uh, last longer and don't change the color. So it needs to be quite sweet. I know you're not used to have fruit with sweet, uh, with sugar, but that's because you're not eating it as a fruit salad, but you're eating it as an ingredient part of your breakfast. So this is sparkling wine. And can you just so remind either, me what, what type of wine was that, Livia? What's, what's the name of that bottle? The sweet wine? Allora, questo qui, no, is Ribolla Gialla, which is, um, Ribolla is a wine produced in Treviso, actually, so it can be produced in Veneto or Friuli Venezia Giulia, is a sparkling white. Okay, so, okay. Uh, I think you have it there, Ribolla. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sure, you know, because you like white. So. so, and also another ingredient important in a fruit salad to give it a bite uh, is also some dried fruits. But if you toast yeah. it before, it's even better. So that would make a nice fruit salad that you can mm. serve uh, in any glass like this. So I also macerate the fruit salad in the fridge with the alcohol and the sugar for a few hours at least because otherwise, uh, uh, you know, it doesn't taste, uh, you know, it, does, it, it is always nicer if it macerates well all together, okay? And then serve with some mint, as I was saying, and wow, that's good. a fruit salad as a dessert. Okay, so it's slightly different from what we usually have for breakfast. Are you going, uh, to, taste so are you going to taste the yes, seven sure. Yes, sure. Yes, sure. Oh, it tastes like. It looks, <laughs> well, I want lovely. to show you the color, so I need a... I don't have a small glass. <laughs> I would have to have a big glass. I didn't, I didn't stop you, Livia. <laughs> so you see, the color is quite dark, quite intense, even if it was just a week, because it should wait a week or 10 days, so as you can see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've diluted a lot, so it's not very yeah. alcoholic. The bottle looks lovely as well, actually. It just reminded me. It would be a nice sort of thing to give somebody as a present, actually. You're always looking for something yeah. different. Be nice very present. often here, uh, when you get married, this is a present, well, a small bottle is, uh, how do you call it, like when they give you um, a Flavor, present to remember Flavor, that, yeah. yeah. They do limoncello usually, and uh, small bottles, nice small bottles, and that's the present when you get married. Yeah. Just, not that we have to get married. But <laughs> <laughs> done that one. It's really good, actually. Uh, it's not very alcoholic. Just, really, I don't feel, uh, I don't feel the yeah. taste doesn't make it sound very alcoholic. 
Okay, you fully had a set, Flavia. I'm sure you're not going to fall over. No. Set. As soon as we turn it off. <laughs> yeah, that, that, you'll be sitting, sitting in the sunshine. That sounds perfect. Well, that was really lovely. It was really interesting, actually, Olivia, with, it, with the recipes today, actually. And the fruit salad, yes, very, very healthy, I think. Apart from all that sugar, somebody was commenting, actually. It was uh, quite lots of sugar. I know. But that's why, because it's a sweet, it's a dessert, it's not. Yeah. As a, yeah. well. If I want to have a fruit, I have a fruit by itself, usually. Yeah. Because I don't like to mix them too much, because each fruit has a completely different flavor. So mm -hmm. I, when I mix it, I consider it like, a, you know, just a dessert. So that's why you yeah. have to be a little bit sweet. It's a way to preserve it, make it last mm -hmm. longer, and, and also, well, fruit that should be ripe. And yeah. I know in UK, that's maybe there are not many fruits that come from there, but you can still yeah. find a good, um, I think, ripe and fruit that, you know, is quite in season, somewhere mm -hmm. is in season. I mean, obviously it can be in season all over around the world, everywhere, but it doesn't have to travel much, you know. So yeah. as you can see um, it's not being produced very far. Yeah, yeah. And it's in season um, there. Yeah, that's right. Just a quick question. Somebody was asking how long would the uh, strawberry liqueur, how long would it last for? forever no really when it's pure al when you use pure alcohol even mm, few years for sure yeah. yeah i don't think it would Try last with that vodka. long i don't think with the flavors guests it would last that long but anyway <laughs> no. actually this one is not too sweet because i've mm -hmm. tried to do percentage you know of sugar in comparison to the amount of water that dilute the proof yeah. of alcohol enough but also don't make it too sweet because that's yeah. the mistake sometimes so it's not too sweet, and you can have it also in other preparation. If you don't like to add sugar in your fruit salad, maybe add a little bit of this because yeah. it's a bit sweet, yeah. so it will make your fruit last longer. Okay. Um, and Liz was just saying, hi, Liz. Um, Liz was asking, yeah. um, if you make the liqueur using the wild fennel, um, how much sugar would you use? Well, it's uh, a little bit more bitter. It's less, you know, obviously strawberries have sweet sweet that sweetness on themselves you know like so they bring the sweetness to the preparation and in which uh, is not so maybe a little bit more but i would stick for the same dilution the dilutions you know like and uh, because um, it is quite sweet with strawberries this amount of sugar but maybe it could be enough and good uh, with uh, wild fennel so, mm. but also we should listen to Carla and ask her because she makes the white fennel liqueur all the time. I think I remember I've learned about white fennel liqueur there. I don't make it usually because my plant from white fennel, white fennel plant comes from Sicily and I got it since many years from there. Mm. I got it there. I think in UK you have white fennel, Vero Lorna. Yeah, yeah, you can get fennel. Yeah, definitely. Can you find it along the streets? Yeah. Can you find it? Because that's, yeah, this is possibly. wild. Yeah, possibly. Somebody else was saying it's a really good tip, actually, for the sparkling wine on the fruit salad. I think that's a really nice tip, actually. It's really unusual. Yeah, yeah really good ideas. It's great. It, um, it makes it nice. When I prepare it for my mother, there's always wine. Yeah. <laughs> it, is it makes it, it very different. Yeah, today's a bank holiday with us in the UK, Olivia. Is it a holiday, holiday with you today, or was that the first no, of May? The, Prima Maggio? Yeah, for us, it's always on the 1st of May. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter which day is the 1st of May. That's when we are home uh mm -hmm. off from work or anything so it was a uh, saturday in this case oh, yeah. yeah today everyone is at work yeah yeah no today we sunny, so. yeah no we have bank holiday bank holiday weather always rains and it's cold and uh, well wait and see we're working anyway work. so. <laughs> that's, that's great well listen have a lovely um bon viaggio olivia to your trip send us lots that's of photos in Send in the postcard. Uh, I think we're going to record a recipe this week that I can pop up next Monday for um, everyone. Yeah. So we're going to miss out on a recipe. Um, yeah. and when are you going to Scotland, Lorne? Are you leaving for Scotland? Uh, for Scotland? When are you going to Ely? Oh, Ely next week. Yeah, so it's Saturday, actually. Yeah, first group, ah. first vacation group uh, on Saturday in Ely in Fife, which is great. Actually, we, we met them online. We did a Zoom call with them last week. So, yeah, really looking forward to going away. And we've also got a new, um, we've got new staycation. We found a really amazing castle just outside Edinburgh, ah. and we've got some painting holidays there in June. So we're going to be um, doing painting in June, yeah. Which is really I think fun. painting holiday there should be really great, yeah. also because yeah. you know, and it's, it's, yeah, it's really, really handy. Yeah it's, yeah, it's really handy. It's literally sort of twenty minutes from um, Edinburgh city centre, so 
we can do some a trip into Edinburgh and bits and pieces. So yeah, that's really that just went out actually at the weekend to a painting guest and it's actually almost full already. So that's great. Um, and then hopefully we've got some other staycations that we're going to sort of announce next week for um, July and August mixtures of some more taster weeks and um, some wellness weeks and uh, uh, and some more painting too. So yeah, I think we're going to be busy actually. And hopefully, Livia, we might even get you to come to see us in Scotland. You have to come and have your holiday. My God. Home. My God, I'm part Scottish now, and I would like to, <laughs> you know, after exactly. dealing with the uh, flavor so many years. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yesterday, actually, at the lesson, we were talking with James, which is a guest mm -hmm. that comes from there, uh, mm -hmm. about scotch and uh, the fact that he doesn't drink much wine, but he yeah, mm -hmm. the scotch, you know, like uh, as an aperitivo. And so we were trying to substitute wine, white wine, in the pasta sauce that we were making with scotch. <laughs> Because otherwise he has to buy a bottle of white wine and he doesn't like to drink. So I miss uh, also your uh, yeah, scotch exactly. that I like, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, our house, we always want you to come and cook cotoletti. That's always, that's, that's, that's we have to come and cook. For Callum, so yeah, exactly. it can be even taller than now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, definitely. Well, that's good. Well, listen, keep us, um, yeah, send us photographs next week uh, from Liguria and uh, have, have sure. a good time. Enjoy. And um, we'll see you. Thank you very we'll much. See you soon. All right. Lovely Thank to see you. everybody. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Have a good week. Enjoy your bank holiday. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.